Now, boys and girls, I've been going over the X-Men animated series stuff since the first rumors initially dropped out there, and it was something that I was actually honestly kind of cautiously optimistic. In a world of Disney Marvel, where they've basically ruined every other single piece of material, franchise, character, and IP that they currently have a hold of, it's just been one of one thing after another. It's just been a disastrous dumpster fire of disappointments that we have seen just come nonstop out of this company over the last few years, just one thing after name after another. Long, or long gone are the gay days of Endgame and the Infinity War, and now we all have things like the Eternals and, of course, the ever-beloved and completely and totally overrated and universally despised by the fans, She-Hulk. While one of those situations out there, one of those things that was coming down the pipeline was the X-Men, the animated series, and honestly, some of the things that the original showrunner, DeBio, who has now been ousted from the company, was saying was actually saying some of the right things. He was talking about he was talking about the original creators, how he was a big fan of the original series. He was trying to make everything in the spirit of that. That's what he was trying to do. This was supposed to be a continuation, not a reboot of the original X-Men, the animated series. And so I was like, okay, we'll give it a shot. We'll give it a shot. And then, of course, what ended up coming out not too very long before the show even premiered, before some of the trailers had even really dropped, even though we've seen the animation style. And honestly, Rogue, what did they do to our girl Rogue? Where is her, our Southern Bell's curves? It is just not fair. How dare they devastate another one of my redheads in such a shameful manner. But the one that irritated me the absolute most, and if you haven't already seen my video and my rant over absolutely roasting and raving over what they did to my boy Morph, go check that out, and I advise you making sure a slight headphone warning will be advised on that one but needless to say it was one of those things that just sent me through the roof and after a show that i was cautiously optimistic about that a show that i'd even kind of essentially gone well look maybe it'll be okay maybe it'll be okay no 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 they decided to make my boy morph come out and flat out say it was non-binary well boys and girls just like so many times again we have seen it throughout all of hollywood they were just a bunch of liar liar pants on fire virtue signaling nonsense for woke points for the sake of woke points just like what we saw with disney and of course lightyear which was supposed to be oh so gay 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 it turns out the non-binary aspect to morph is nothing more than a talking point and they've finally admitted it so we're going to check out this article from bounty into comics getting all the juicy details and see exactly what they have to say make sure you like share comment and subscribe if you have not already x-men 97 voice actresses series never explicitly refers to morph as non-binary it's not that it didn't exist it's just in no way a mainstream term oh because you respected the continuity so much of the time period and the era that this show is initially set, that's why you decided not to use the word. Yes, of course, you just respected it so much. But of course, shout out to the retcon from back in the 2000s, which made Morph nothing more than an amorphous blob when he was born, completely and totally going against decades upon decades of mutant lore, which said they didn't traditionally, just did not traditionally start showing off their powers until their teenage years because of puberty had something to do with ac ac activating the X gene. But hey, who cares about all that continuity when we can do it our way? Yeah. Anyway, mar modern mainstream comics are dead. Go check out Ripperverse. It's seemingly confirming that the act of declaring Morph to be non-binary was nothing more than a shallow attempt to score social media brownie points. The mutant shapeshifter X-Men 97 voice actor J.P. Carlick has admitted that despite the public promotion that the hero now identifies as non-binary, the show will never explicitly refer to him as such. That's right. It's put out in all the campaign. It's put out all into the marketing but yes, it's just marketing and it will never even come up in the story. So they just decided to make Morph hideous for the sake of making his character hideous. Carlick, who themselves identify as non-binary, color us shocked, but openly uses he, him pronouns. Then why do you even bother identifying as non-binary then? Provided this baffle, it's almost like it maybe it's just something that's a virtue signal that gets you extra points in Hollywood and might have even be the reason why you scored this voice acting role. Hmm. Provided this baffling insight in the Disney Plus series approach to Morph during a recent post-series premiere interview given to CBR's Sam Stone. Asked by Stone if he could elaborate as to why, despite purportedly being non-binary, Morph still exclusively refers to himself as male. 
and the voice actor said that the production team declined to have him use the they them pronouns because it would have been historically inaccurate. Yes, I'm sure it had nothing to do with the massive amount of backlash you would have gotten from the fans, even though after all, you know, you've already gotten that exact same backlash just by saying that he was non-binary because we know what this is. It's a virtue signal. And now you're going to get blasted by all of your wokey cult acoly acolytes of the cult out there because now it's not going to be gay enough. And they're gonna, even their crazy asses are going to see through your BS and know exactly what it is. You're gaslighting people and it's nothing more than a virtue signal and you don't actually believe your own BS. You can smell it, you know it's crap, and that's why you're not actually shoving it into your own mouth. You're just trying to shove it down everybody else's. Two things about that. One, as far as I know, we're never going to say the word non-binary because nobody said the word non-binary in the 90s because it's a nonsensical word that doesn't actually mean anything. Non-binary doesn't actually exist. You're either one thing or you're another. There is not something that is both things at the exact same time. If you observe something, it's either something, it's either one thing or another. May it change? Yes, but you're either one or the other. It's not that it didn't exist. It was just no way a mainstream term at the time. Wait, 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 wait. It's not because nobody said the word non-binary. As far as we know, we're never going to say the word because nobody said the because nobody said the word non-binary in the 90s. It's not that it didn't exist. It's just that a way it was no way a mainstream term at the time. But you just said nobody said the word back then. But you just said it wasn't a mainstream. But you said it's not that it didn't exist. That's literally a contradictory statement. Oh, that's right. Everything about your ideology is a contradictory statement. That makes more, this whole paragraph makes more sense now, which means it doesn't make any sense, but it's not supposed to. Morph's understanding of who he is could equate to what a modern person would say is non-binary. Oh, his understanding of who he is. So you're projecting onto my boy Morph. Gotcha. Gotcha. Morse's understanding of who he is could equate to what a modern person would say is not binary, but he just doesn't have the terminology for it. Oh, that's right. He's not as educated. He's not as enlightened. People in the 90s were as enlightened as you crazy ideological assholes are nowadays. That's right. I see it. I see it. You're so much smarter than the rest of us. I'm sorry. I completely understand now. At the same time, they then wasn't a concept and a term as using it as a pronoun. Because it's not a pronoun. They, them refers to a group of individuals. There are so many ways that I identify with Morph. Oh, yes, you can see yourself in it, especially now that you've transformed him into this monstrosity that he never was. But one of them is that I personally identify as gender queer. Thought you were non binary, which some might say is an offshoot of non binary. Oh, so you're not non binary. Now you're. That's what I say. None of this makes any sense. None of this is all nonsensical. But I use he, him pronouns. So then why why do you identify as gender queer if you you don't bother trying to understand it? I, it's just gonna hurt your head. A lot of it has to do with the fact that I'm in my 40s. Oh dear God. And came into my full understanding of my gender in my late 30s. Oh, what do you know about that? that has a lot to do with where he was living and who he was around at the time? Hmm. I've always used he, him pronouns, and they feel like an old college sweatshirt where maybe they don't fit all that well, but they're still really comfy until I find something better. I'll just keep using that. Oh, until it stops becoming a virtue signaling financially. Yeah, financially viable for you. Okay. I'm a queer activist. I run a nonprofit that advocates for queer representation. I'm also co-founded a voter registration organization. I know what's going on in the world, especially politically. So no, it didn't surprise me at all. I think I appreciate how much counter backlash there was. With people like, have you watched the X-Men? Are you familiar with why they created and what they're about? Did you forget that? That was reassuring. Yes. And let's just go ahead and end right here because this this garbly gook nonsense is just going to end up continue breaking our brain and hurting ourselves. And there's no point in listening to Dema, demons and people possessed by demons because clearly they are absolutely nonsensical. As has been reiterated by Stan Lee many times over the years. The reason why the X-Men were created is he was tired of coming up with an individual origin story for every single superhero out there. So mutants became a blanket and general term, which made it a really, really easy to come up with superheroes without having a main origin story. You just had an origin story for a whole bunch of them. So no, the mutants were never 
ever designed to be any kind of political representation, no, 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 woke BS garbage nonsense, like all of you tried to continue to project on them. It was simply Stan Lee simplifying his life. And I don't blame him. The X-Men have always been diverse with a wide variety of people inside of them. They never needed your BS or your nonsense to be interjected into them. They never needed your disastrous art style to come in and destroy them. And they sure as hell needed a guy who is a shapeshifter and who should have come into his powers according to proper X-Men lore during his teenage years. So yes, he would have been born a boy or he would have been born a girl. I don't care about your retconning BS in the early 2000s or in the late 2000s. As far as I'm concerned at this point, there isn't a single comic book story out there that could be considered official canon post-2000. Because it really does seem to be within the infection and the destruction of so many of our beloved characters have come out there. And now, at the end of the day, like we have told you and like I have told you time and time before, these companies don't care about your pronouns. They don't care about how you identify. They just thought it was a marketing tactic that was going to make them money. The problem is now they do have so many of you true believers out there embedded into their company. They cannot turn themselves around to even save their own bottom line. So yes, the old adage, go woke, go broke exists for a reason. And while you will hold on to your mental delusions and the cuddly little demon you have trapped inside of your body, the rest of the world will move on. They will forget about you. And any company that you are going to hold your dying claws into will go down with you. And it's sad to say that you'll end up taking X-Men and all of Marvel with you. But hey, go woke, go broke. But we're going to remind you, you don't get to destroy my boy Morph without all of us making sure you're exposed for doing it for nothing more than virtue signaling BS points. And now you finally admitted admitted the exact same kind of hypocrite we've always known you to be.